walking to get my bag or backpack up, but we connect with ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And today, y'all, I have an extraordinary guest here with me. I met this young lady who was working for the same company, Total Don't Care, something like that. <laughs> um, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, darling, how are you doing? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm doing cool. so great. It's raining outside, but we're here. But we're here. Yeah, we, we still <laughs> made it. You know what I mean? The snow okay. didn't get us too bad. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Woo! 2024. Oh, I actually yeah. like the number 24. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I was born on the 24th of May, so I think I, that's why I was excited going into the new year. I'm okay. other things, but I do like the number 24. Okay. So it's going to be a good year. Let's yeah, just say that. It's, it's, it's the Kobe, it's the Kobe Bryant year. There you go. Uh, so, do you, have any, do you have any goals for 2024? What are you looking for for 2024? So, growing up, I would say that I would always have, you know, resolutions, or I would have to be forced to make, like, a New Year's resolution, oh. and I would say that I don't really stick with them as good. It probably will last maybe a couple of weeks, then I just break them. Right. So, definitely <laughs> with the most part, um, I want to be more consistent with being more fit, like going to the gym, okay. eating well. Trying this whole thing of making sure I at least go to the gym like three to four times in a week. Um, How do you go to the gym now? You go to the gym at all now? Yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. So about three times. And I didn't know when anyone starts going to the gym, you think you know what you're doing? You have no idea. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> I didn't know that people break down their days. Like back, legs. I'm going to the gym and I'm just like, I can go on the treadmill, sweat, go home, eat a burger, I'm good. Yeah, no, you got, you got like isolated muscles. Yeah, like there's five muscles in your legs and I didn't even know you had to work all the muscles in order to get the results depending on how you figure doing. it out. I don't know, I just go into the gym and I just notice that, okay, this machine targets it, tar I follow the picture, it's targeting this, <laughs> and then there's your calves, and then there's other muscles that have long names, and I'm just like, look, this, this, that, and that. So, just by going there and just like trying out like random machines, I don't even know how to work, it's just mm -hmm. showing up, and I think that's the biggest thing when you're starting um, a new habit is just being able to show up every day. Yeah. <laughs> Finding that motivation. Finding that motivation. I'm, I'm with you. That's, that was one of my goals. My, my one word for this year is health. So um, the last couple of years, um, I, I feel like I neglected my health um, because I was so focused on building the business. I was like, if I love, if, if I take time to go to the gym and stuff like that, then I'm taking away from the business. And I always got to be in the business. I always got to be working in the yes. business. And so because of that, I stopped doing the working out stuff, right? Yeah. So now for the whole month of January, I'm working out two times a day. Yeah. Um, and I'm not doing any more strength training because I'm like, there's no benefit in me lifting 315 pounds anymore. <laughs> um, then, like, I, like, I'm not, I'm not competing for anybody's strongman competition. Like, I just, I want to fit, be fit. I want to look good during the summer. I want to be able to take off my shirt and not feel. <laughs> Horrible for taking off my shirt, you know what I'm saying? They do say like summer body start like in the winter time. Yeah. People really think that, you know, granted in 90 days. And, and, and like at yeah. April, or oh, April, oh, I'm going to start working out. Yeah, all the fitness gurus I see, I could see there before and after. And it's no comparison, but sometimes you're just like, wow, how did they do that? It may not all be genetics, but I'm just like, you do so much of research and you follow so many people. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I can do that. I we can do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Like I, um, I'm super big on the health this year. Um, any other goals for this year? Like, uh, like other, other goals that you have 2024. Looking into 2024, and then we're gonna get into, we're gonna get into your story in a little bit. I want to say that everything that I wrote down, I want to, I started journaling more because okay. I would have these thoughts and ideas, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. And I, I come up with ideas at the most random times, driving to work. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, I tell everyone this and my students that I teach is that my biggest, um, where I do all of like my studying and research is literally in my car. <laughs> and that's like the funniest place to have an office, but I can think more and clearer when I'm just sitting outside of like a Starbucks instead of going inside a Starbucks. But like all of like my brainstorming moments have been in my car. So this year, I wrote them down. Okay. And everything that I said that I was going to do, I'm going to try my best to just cross it off my list one by one. 
Okay. Um, I want to go deeper, like deeper, yeah, deeper into my business with selling um, my digital products. I want to continue with the teaching and inspiring and going further with the lash business. But one of the biggest things that I wanted to get into that I said last year I was going to do and never did, but mm -hmm. this year actually started to do was um, market my digital products uh, to help lash students as well. Okay. So it's not just only going to target you know girls in the DMV, but it's universal and anyone can get right. some info as well. Okay. So that's one of my things. <laughs> okay. All right. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. So so tell so tell the people uh, who is darling. How, what were you doing? Uh, I know what you were doing. Why <laughs> you were doing before you went for your full time in entrepreneurship now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What what were you doing before entrepreneurship? So when I graduated, I really was pretty already determined that when I didn't know what I wanted to do, I was always told by my parents, um, this is what you should be or what you should become. Um, I'm big on my students, especially when I advocate and I tell them, please choose something that you know that you're passionate about. Don't feel like you have to be forced into doing something. Um, and the greatest lesson I feel like anyone can tell, like a student, or um, someone who's getting into entrepreneurship is that the best lesson is coming from someone who's failed. <laughs> wow. Failed many times um, and had their ups and downs. Like, I feel like entrepreneurship is like a roller coaster, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you may feel like you get stuck at the top and then going down is always just like, oh, it makes your stomach yeah. hurt so much in pain. Um, I never wanted to do entrepreneurship, well, I want to say, like, four or five years ago. Um, nursing was already kind of like in my culture that every Filipino person gets into the medical field or gets into, like, this... You're supposed to be a doctor. High or, the, yeah. yeah. Um, I get asked that... You're supposed to be taking care of people's kids, having all doctors, all sorts of Oh, my God. Yes. When I noticed Why that... <laughs> yes. And... And it's funny because I've had many jobs and people look at me and just like, oh my God, you're so tiny, how old are you, blah, 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 blah. I actually go into my journey, they get so like, it's beyond them that I've done so many things, but the things that I've done has helped other people because whether it was military, whether it was um, being a religious affairs you were in the military? military. Yeah, see? That's what people were literally like. I feel like I remember that. <laughs> it's an old picture yeah. on your Instagram. Um, that's a whole other story too. So if I could write a whole book on myself, that would be. Wait, 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 so we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going back. Back. Yeah, we yeah, so, have to keep so, going so, back. So you graduated college, and then you went to the military. You went to the military, and then. And no, you to I graduated, got my four-year bachelor's degree, and okay. then I enlisted into the military. And that when was you get your bachelor's degree. degree. Counseling psychology. Why? It wasn't in nursing because I started my nursing accreditation. Noticed that I failed at the most two important subjects where you could become a nurse slash doctor, which was math and science. This agent was not good at any of them. <laughs> I was not good at any of them. I was miserable. Like, I would be crying. I would be doing anything just to get a seat to pass my courses. But that was not good enough to get into nursing. I was not good at it. I think it was just the fact that I had major test anxiety. Right. And um, I guess the pressure of my culture and, and my parents really played a big role in this is what you have to do. This is all that you're going to be good at. And I really never had a chance to grow up and really um, find my passions until I got into entrepreneurship. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so how did you how did you get past doing like what was that conversation like with your parents when you told them that I'm not going to be a nurse? Doctor? It was horrible. Um, <laughs> it was horrible. People would be like, "Oh, they understood," and they were just so open. They were not. My dad really thought when I took a lash course. Um, taking that leap of faith, and I took my lash course from a girl named Lauren, and she was a decade younger than me. I was 27. She was 17, teaching lash courses. A boss, right? And she taught me how to do lashes. I went to my parents, excited as ever, my first night, came home, told them I took a lash course. You know what my dad said to me? He said, oh, wow, you really want to become an eye doctor. That's great. That's great. I said, 
no, I want to do eyelash extensions. And he was so, like, <laughs> flabbergasted. Oh, man. And I was having, I was pacing, you know. I stood outside the, the house. Um, at the time, I was living with my parents. I, stood, I was outside the house just really just having a conversation with myself. Like, how is this going to go? Told him. He stood there for, like, <laughs> a good five minutes, put his head down, and, like, he didn't really talk to me for like a couple of weeks, which kind of like really upset me. Mm -hmm. But then, surprisingly enough, I thought it was going to be the exact opposite. My mom getting upset, but my dad was more cool about it. Um, as weeks and time went on, um, a week after I took my course, I was just like, how do I fund the means to get my own suite? They didn't support me. Therefore, a lot of lash artists, they start at home, in home, right? right? Um, servicing clients. And then I found the, whatever I had in my savings to put it towards getting my suite the next week. And that's how much I believed in myself mm -hmm. that when I had my whole family telling me, you can't do this, and it's not going to be successful, there was this voice in the back of my head, and I always have my talks with God. Right. And it told me, something told me just to, just to do it anyways, mm -hmm. prove them wrong. Um, and from then, I was able to... Do my lash services in Bowie. Um, right wait, 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 come back, come back. <laughs> come on, you're going too far. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> so, okay, all right, so we had a conversation with the parents. Yes. You go to college, you yes. graduate with the, with the four year degree. Yeah. All right, um, you, and listen to the military. Yeah. What part, what branch? Okay, Army. Army. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I enlisted into the Army, but that was about a year after me becoming a lash tech. That was a year yeah. after becoming a lash tech. Yeah, it was a year after becoming a lash tech. I left for basic training for about three and a half months. I was in Fort Jackson. Woo! <laughs> Relax in Jackson. I went there. I got injured. So, another hump on my roller coaster. Right. right? Came back home. Ended up getting back into case management. Mm -hmm. And then with case management, I was just back at the 9 to 5. Right. And then I was still like on the weekends, I still had to pay for a suite. I was lashing part time. Then I found myself going back into full time entrepreneurship. And I guess you could say, you know, never looked back. Right. Since then. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, how, how, so you were, so you were in the military for basic training. Yeah. Got injured. Yeah. They sent you home. Yeah. They sent home. And, I, and it was a part of me that I was like, my health. <laughs> right. my health and in that time it was kind of relieving kind of leaving for basic training and I knew my family was very confused still about it right um being an only daughter um being my dad's only daughter and I'm a girl <laughs> his baby girl so leaving kind of was like a vacation for me but it was kind of like a mental thing mm -hmm. that it was a, it's a culture shock when people are like, oh, my God, you might die out there. Oh, my God, you might break your bones. And I'm just like, I'm just going to go anyways and do it. And that's then not, let, let me go through it. That's not even how the military really is. No, like, it's not. They, they, like, parents try to scare the mess out of you. I would do it again. When they, when they don't <laughs> understand certain things. You I know what I'm saying? Like, that's the reason why I never listen to the military. <laughs> because they were like, you're going to be on the front line. You're going to be in war. Yeah. It's going to be a draft. You were going to Iraq, they're going to put you on the front line, you're going to be the first person killed. I was like, Psh, I ain't going to the military, what are you talking no. about? No. <laughs> it's an experience. You meet so many different, you meet people along yeah. the way. I love, because I can still have those connections. Mm -hmm. Plus Facebook gets you hip to, you know, where everybody is in the world. But um, I met some great people along the way, and... Um, I chose reservists instead of going active duty because, of course, I was just like, I'll still be able to come home. I'll just yeah. be able to do things on the weekend, and my base was in Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I really wouldn't have to make too far of a commute. Right. I'd still be able to do my trainings, you know, once a month on the weekends. Um, and then that was when I had another kind of, if you say, your job, your MOS in the military. Um, mine was a religious affairs specialist, which was cool because religious I was like affairs counseling specialist. military people who've gone through PTSD and oh. stuff like that. Just being a venting partner. Basically, that's okay. what I was. Praying for people, 
um, venting, just being someone's outlet, just support system, which I love because I love doing that anyways with okay. working with people because that's like hand in hand with counseling, right? Right, right. Um, and I always felt myself going into different career avenues just to uplift other people who may be thinking about going into the same career field, right? Mm -hmm. um, and after that, when I came home, I got into entrepreneurship, and there was this college professor who wanted to recruit me for, um, like, an adjunct professor teaching anatomy and physiology. And I was like, okay, why not? Let me get into that. I don't know. There's something with me with someone telling me, I see you doing this. And it would be crazy of me not to listen to a wise person who has this much faith what in me. Right? What makes a wise person, though? <sighs> they take the time to <laughs> want to talk <laughs> to, I don't know, I like old people. That's kind of creepy. But like old wise people, like, I don't like Harry Potter. So like people who look like Dumbledore, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a cultural thing, though? Because I, because... Mm, I, don't I, don't, know. I, don't, I don't know if black people like really be listening to the old folk, older folks like that. I think. I mean, I can attest to that. Some do, but then you know how someone might be talking to you and you're kind of just like in one ear, out the other. Right. Some people are like that, but okay. that's all just your perspective and not. it might not be everyone's perspective right. at the end of the day. I don't know, but I'm always in tune to listen to people. I think I just fall into situations where random people like to just start a conversation or like in the elevator. I'm always like gravitating. I don't know if it's my aura. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it's because my name is, my middle name is Joy. I don't know, but <laughs> people just sometimes just gravitate towards me. Right. And I just listen. Okay. If I have the time. <laughs> that, that's, that's one of the reasons why you would make a great psychologist. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because you like to listen. Right. You so need someone to just bless me with that psychologist money. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you, so um, so you get into uh, so after you get into human services, right? You're still yeah. doing lashes on the side. Yes. Um, at what point did you say um, I'm going in this full time? Like, was there something that you had? Because for me to go full time entrepreneurship, I need at least six months of my expenses saved. Yeah. Did you have a goal in mind like that or were you just like, I'm just jumping out the window with this? That was enough. <laughs> the second part. I will say, wow, now that you mentioned that, that is a great attainable goal to save for six months, but nothing like that ever kind of came to me up until just recently. So before, I always was just taking leaps of faith out there and always having that mindset, God will provide. <laughs> and sometimes he does. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about the time where sometimes you're just asking him, why did you put me in this right. position? But then I had to realize that was him letting me know that, okay, you're totally capable of this, but it's not your time. Right. Ooh, and I was just like, it's not my time. But like, my problem was is that I wasn't patient enough to kind of see the signs, right? Um, and so I really would want to think that everything happens for a reason, whether it's, you know, sometimes bad and you just don't allow it to, mm -hmm. but those moments make you stronger. Okay. You know, it's never like um, regrets, it's always lessons. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so what was your plan? To quit, like, what what made you say, I'm done with work, I'm just going to go into entrepreneurship full time? When I noticed that a 9 to 5 was just getting way too much for me mentally, that I would wake up and I'm just like, I don't want to go to work today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know that some people out there, whoever's watching this, would kind of feel the same way. Like, if you wake up and you're like, I don't like the people at my job. It's not worth the money. Why can't I just wake up and work for myself, love what I do, you know, um, and still be able to help people? It was just the clocking in, and you never just get enough time for yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. 
whether or not you work your nine to five, you still have to come home, and there could be a million and ten things that you still have to do. Maybe you Which neglect. We have to do. No, maybe you neglect your health, even though we were traveling. But like traveling all the way to like oh Bethesda or Baltimore City. Woo! Let me tell you, it is not. That's like you know, you spend them all day in a car driving. Yeah. Really in that car. And we had no pretend, no security with us. We didn't even have a name badge. No, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Yeah, they had a trust we were. Crazy, we we were. man. And we had to do our own taxes. Yeah. Yeah. They made, they made everybody W2, though. Oh. Uh-huh. And, 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 and raise, <laughs> and raise the, uh, the pay. And they're hiring. I, oh, yeah. The pay is at like 60 right now. I cannot. Yeah, the pay is at like 60 right now. Still the same hiring people. I don't know. If I'm if, it's still the same right company. I only hold one of parts of it. I'll go in and I'll train them. Yeah, um, professional development. They need professional yeah. development training like crazy. Really? Heck, yeah, they need professional development. They are su- it's super unprofessional up in that joint. Oh, good like, to know. They, like, nah, man. It's okay. They, nah. <laughs> we, <laughs> well, the story, become your own entrepreneur. Yeah, listen, all right, thanks. All right, so, so, you, so you get into entrepreneurship. Yeah. How does your first month go in entrepreneurship? You're this full-time lash tech. How does your first month go? It's exciting and exhilarating at first because you're like, oh, I'm my own boss. I'm over here convincing people they can be their own bosses too. Some days are really, really good. You'll have your days where you have a lot of clients. Um, I'll have some weekends where I'm fully booked and busy. But then there's also the days where you kind of like have off days. But how do you utilize those days, right? Um, Staying organized and kind of supporting and surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals who are kind of in the same career field mm-hmm. as you. Um, for Lash Techs, it's really huge. Um, whether you follow a Lash Tech that's all the way in California or someone who has like their own, you know, storefront, right? Um, always keep a book of ideas how you can be engaged like on social media. That was a big thing for me and still to this day, I would like to learn so I can learn and be able to teach. So I feel like with entrepreneurship, it's like a baton, uh, like a baton right? Mm. Um, if you know something, um, pass it down to me so I can pass it down for somebody else. Right. And I think that someone, you know, asked me um, like a while back, like, what are you going to do if you were to like make a million with your, with your lash industry? And I'd be like, the first thing I'd be like, um, I'd say was, I go and reach my hand and help the rest, right? <laughs> I want to be more than just like the popular or like well-known lash artist in the DMV area. I want to take it further and be able to have opportunities where I can give back to the community. Right. Um, and that's a big thing for me too is that I don't want money with entrepreneurship to ever the income should never be bigger than the impact, right? Ooh, that's crazy. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I don't want all the money that I potentially will be making because I'm going to manifest that <laughs> for the future. The amount of money that I make, I, I want my impact in the community for my students. Um, for people out there who are scared to even try to get into entrepreneurship or just to say I started my own business, right? Because it might not be for everybody mm-hmm. and I can't force that. But those who are watching this and may be scared to even try because it's a silly little idea. That's a silly little idea that my own parents didn't even believe in me that I could do. Um, I turned it into something much greater, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what keeps me motivated and keeps me going. I love it. So, yeah. So, 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 teach me about the lashes, right? How long? How long? How long do they do they stay? Like, do they stay on forever? Like, <laughs> you gotta pull them off. Like, how does how does the process work? So, of course, with with lashes, they are extensions. So you attach them. Not everyone does this, but properly attach them to your own eyelash hairs, right? So if someone came in and they didn't have any lashes, of course I wouldn't be able to attach them to anything because there would be nothing to attach it on. (laughs) That would be one. Eyelash extensions aren't for anybody. I will say it doesn't make anyone, any client more beautiful than the next. I feel like they're just an enhancement. Mm -hmm. So when I'm educating, I'm letting 
lash, future lash techs know that this is an enhancement. This is not to change or alter anybody. This is not like liposuction or something that's like irreversible, right? right. This is something you can try on if you're going on, on like a date or on vacation or if you just want to look cute for your birthday because you're going out, right? Right. Um, you properly attach them within two to four weeks depending on what's called retention. Retention is how long will the lashes last. Right. It varies. When you're first starting off, my students know that there is no walk in the park when you become a lash tech only because you have to practice, practice, practice with anything that you do. Um, and then afterwards, the client will come back to you kind of like a nail appointment. After a while, nails mm -hmm. will grow. Come back. Um, get them redone again. And it's like a revolving door of getting the service done. Okay. And it just varies. I think the biggest thing is making sure that you uphold your clientele. Start in home or start in a suite. Grow. Um, start your product line. Start digital products. So the world of lash techs, I will say, one day Forbes uh, said that, you know, the beauty industry was going to make billions of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. um, for me, I wanted to educate, just keep educating. And I feel like with being in this counseling and industry, you have to be patient, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the big character traits of being like a good teacher, a good educator, is you having to be patient. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, so they last, like you said, about two, two weeks. Two to four weeks. Two to four Come weeks. back, get a refill. Come back, mm -hmm. come back, get a refill, get them done. Okay. Um, how do you or do you help women pick the size eyelashes? <laughs> because some of them be getting them eyelashes that be way too big, yo. Know, they be looking like that um like that, that, that walrus off of the, was the Willie Mammoth off of Sesame Street. Oh no. They be looking no. like, they be looking First of all. like this. And I'm like, yo. That is not a mammoth. That is a snuffle up against. Yeah, snuff, snuffles. That's the snuffle up against. No, snuffle up against. <laughs> their, their, their eyelashes be looking like this, bro. And I'm like, dog, that's crazy. So, like, do you rec do you make recommendations? Sure. Okay. And it goes down to the nitty gritty where you can pick based on their eyelash shape. And I didn't know this because I also love learning. So, there's almond eyes, round eyes, oval eyes. Um, there are different lash looks and sizes. The mm -hmm. lashes go on <laughs> your face. The lash sizes go and determine on um, the diameter and also the length. I've worked with lengths that are you as have small. long eyes and short eyes? Well, the eye shape is kind of, you know, shaped differently. Like okay. almond eyes is a little bit more so like oval and then round eyes. But choosing what extensions go on can determine based off of their eyelashes that they already have. So for me, I wouldn't put a heavy lash on your natural lash only because I know that that might fall off and you don't really want to see it through your peripherals, right? That's just the science part. That's how I make my recommendations. But there are women, there are girls, teenagers nowadays, I'm, now I'm seeing middle schoolers with, with lash extensions, okay? Um, they are choosing, you know, diameters that's more like on the heavier side or lengths that are like 25 millimeters. And yes, that is a thing. I didn't know that. But that's their preference. So as a person who provides that service, I'll make my recommendations letting them know like, hey, this is, do you really want to have 25 millimeters? Let me just show you what that looks like. Especially right? you have a small face. Bro. Yeah, I'm like, like. Your face is this big and your <laughs> eyelash is this big. Like, I, like nobody wants to see you blank like this. But let's also talk about sometimes when girls find, you know, other looks that maybe somebody they adolescent or a celebrity and they're like, I want to look like her, you know? And it's kind of like, okay, well. You don't look like her right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you gotta at least Sorry. resemble yeah. her in order for you to look like her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, you could, it could be a variation. Yeah. It's an enhancement. That's why I said, like, that's why I said it's, it's it's temporary. That's why I like the service because it's not like I'm making something that's permanent. Mm -hmm. um, it's just an enhancement. It's something fun to try. And even if you don't like it, you know, there are people who try lash extensions and they say at the end of the day, maybe it just wasn't for me. Right. You know, there's so many lash techs out here and there's also a lot of clients who try different lash techs mm -hmm. out. And everybody has their own style and I think that's why artistry is so unique. 
do you so like do do you or or can you do you sell like your own like the fake lashes for like the young girls like do you sell those at all no i don't do the strips why the strips, i yeah. can't i don't want to advocate for something that i don't even use on myself because then I would have to teach you how to apply them on. Of course, YouTube University can teach anybody how to apply. I mean, you just put a little instruction just, on the back. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah. there is a way yeah. to make money. And I know some Capitalism. Lash, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of rash techs who do that as well. <laughs> but then again, I'm just like, man, I would have to go through a whole system where I get the products, do the packaging, and then make sure I can sell it in the actual, probably, you know, in my suite. But flash strips are quick. It kind of deters from my actual services of getting the extensions because the difference is with lash extensions, at night when you come home from, from the club or something or like your night out, you can't like pull them off and like put them How do they come and, off though? Remover, lash remover. There's, yeah, a, there's a lash remover? Yeah, there's a lash remover. Now these talented lash techs also can sell products, whether it's a lash bath, shampoo, it's a lash a what? Shampoo. Lash shampoo. A lash bath. That's the thing. The thing that you put the lashes in? No, you don't put it anywhere. You literally will... It's a foam in a bottle. You uh, press down. Foam comes out. We grab something that looks like a mascara one. Oh. And we clean the lashes. That is a product that can sell anywhere between a couple of $15 to $25, depending on the size of the bottle. That's what you use to clean your lashes before. What would be in the lashes though? Like makeup or something? Yeah. Um, residue, if you had eye makeup on, which is not really recommended, but there's also like, you know, debris. The long lashes might harbor, you know, particles or, you know, eye makeup or just regular makeup. If, if your lashes are so long, <laughs> then the joints is, <laughs> is, is, is inhabiting particles like yeah it's, it's a lot you, you gotta maintain your lashes so it's like you go for a hair service and then you kind of want to know well what's the proper shampoo to use or like how do i you know keep my there's beard away the way you have to take care yeah there's lash shampoo there's lash remover um there's primer like you have primer for paint on the walls right there's primer for like lashes too. To before, do what? Before after. When did this become a thing? When did this be like all, all of a sudden? It was just like boom, we doing lashes now. Yeah, crazy, right? Like, did, like, do you know like what that jump was like? At, as, as, because at, at first it was like I didn't see nobody with lashes for real. Yeah. The lash extensions. If it, it was the little peel off drinks because they, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, they did it for the night and then they just... Man, put it somewhere. Stick it right. on the wall or something. And now all of a sudden there's there's lash text and this is like a whole thing. Like, we're, we're creating, creating more jobs out here. You know, creating more, you know, freedom and people are literally leaving their mm -hmm. normal jobs, regular nine to fives, part time and I've seen and I've taught students who have their 9 to 5, but they lash on certain occasions. They don't do it on the weekend. I've seen students go through school, go through college, high school and middle school. I mean, well, yeah, high school and middle school, starting off to learn how to do lashes. They just work on their friends, family, start getting some money. Then they want to expand and grow in the beauty industry. And I think it's so cool. I don't really like so, any other lash techs. So how, how much how much does the does the service cost? Like, like do you have different packages? Mm -hmm. Like for okay, so, so tell us about the packages. So when you start off, when I started off as a lash tech, there was this main um, standard package called the classic package. That's more of a natural looking set, and by natural I mean it okay. looks like individual lashes. So it has a little bit of flutter. So that's how I describe it to anyone who wants to know the differences between the packages. A little bit of flutter. Then you have something called hybrid. Hybrid package would be a little bit more than your classic, and it gives you a little bit more of um, volume. So more lashes, more length. Okay. We have volume. So when you think of volume, you think of, okay. It's a whole lot of lashes. There's a whole lot of lashes. That's the... Not really snuffle up against because there's more packages up from the volume. Right. So, on average, um, I started doing lashes when I first started. They were ranging around $50, $65 per set. 
Mm. And time-wise, it takes about, <laughs> when I first started doing lashes, it was taking me three hours. <laughs> what? Three hours. I had a client literally just laying there. She would either take a nap, listen to her podcast. She would be in, sitting in my seat for three hours with me. Um, now, classics can start ranging from 130 $150, maybe even more depending on your area. I know there's some parts of uh, Cali and Florida who are charging maybe 250 just for the basic. For the basic. For the and so, so you said it took you three hours before. How long does it take you now? So depending on the set that you want to get. The classic. About two and a half. Yeah. I know that doesn't make much. Two and a half. Hours yeah. to do Two and a half one lash. <laughs> no, both. Why does it take so long? I think what people sometimes don't think is that you are isolating um, in each individual lash on a person. Like if I was to take a microscope above your lashes and to see the up view looking down at your lashes, you would have like maybe I don't know fifty to sixty lashes. Kind of, mm -hmm. because um, I'm always paying attention to people's eyes now. <laughs> but it varies. I can't look at you and just be like, oh, I think you have like 80 lashes on each eye. You have to isolate to put the extension on one lash at a time. It takes time. You can't rush it. It's not a type of procedure in a sense where you can just attach put down your tweezers because you have these tools, these lash tweezers that you use and it's one on each hand and it's kind of like a, a mechanism where you have to look down, isolate, attach. Then you have to put it in the glue. So it's, it's like that. So imagine doing that for one lash at a time. So wait a minute. So, <laughs> so the, the eyelashes, it's not like a whole, it's, it's not like a, like a thing of eyelashes, and then you just, I, you have to like pick up one strand at That's time. if you want to do something more so unnatural. Now, the lash industry has gotten so, like, unique with their styles that people are charging based on designing certain styles or to look like certain celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, you would charge more, like, there's a, a Kim K look. Or if there, let's just say, like, a celebrity had, like, um, a... Colors. For example, um, Drake's album, Her Loss, I don't know if you remember the, the cover of it. The girl album. on the front? Yeah. Yes. If you paid attention, like not everybody does, but like Her Lashes, they have color in it. Mm -hmm. There was a, a Drake-inspired Her Loss album cover going viral on, um, on Instagram because a girl replicated the same you know, hairstyle as the cover, and the lashes were so unique. People were paying so much money just to look like the girl off the album, and color is like a, a additional fee. Kind of like if girls are watching this, like there's additional service for for nails for design. Um, it's like that now because whatever season it, it is, whether it's Halloween, additional color. I don't. There's colored lashes now, so there's not like there's color lashes. There's color lashes now. There are girls who are putting rhinestones on lashes now. That's the thing. Um, I don't know, but that's why each artist Man. does their <laughs> own creative things in lash artistry. I can't, I can't lie to you. <laughs> like they do do this, and that's you know how they get their money. I don't know how it fits. You just do it the same way that you buy the extensions. Okay, so so, <laughs> so you sell products, right? Yes. What products do you sell? So right now. I have my tweezer line. So I have my Q&L Beauty Studios tweezers. Um, the tweezers are versatile depending on what lash style you are performing. So each tip has a different curvature at the end. Each uh, lash tool does something specifically different. Okay. Um, and it's cool because, you know, at the end of the day, whether, you know, I teach or I inspire another lash tech, they can buy uh, products for me as well. This is a great way to network 
to another mm -hmm. lash text, which I really wanted to do, but it's hard. The back work that people don't see on Instagram is just like, to, to deal with these vendors, oh, it's a struggle, right? If you get anything from overseas, it's, it's always hard. Um, I remember this one time, I was just like, oh my god, I, I started my own tweezer line. I got my products, they were in front of me, they were all wrong. Paid all that money, and they were all wrong. Another thing in the roller coaster where I was just like, oh, I'm down again. But you didn't, you couldn't send it back. You couldn't like get them to replace. I didn't contact them anymore. That was the crazy part. I took my money and I just had a product. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I just know that I was pissed that I had a box from China full of like tools that was not even how I wanted them, and that just irritated me because I was just like, oh, here I am with a goal to drop my line, and it's not working. But of course, you would want to quit after that, right? Uh, and listen, I. <laughs> So but, somebody got something explaining to do. Listen, okay, but it's okay. Yeah, that was like a hurdle. And I think that's what life's about is sometimes you have these moments and setbacks, but you have to push through them. Right, right, okay. All right, I got you. So so you sell the, the tweezer line. What other products do you sell? So last year I also told myself, because <laughs> I found a paper one time when I was cleaning up. I always clean before the new year for some odd reason, try to bring in the new year. Mm -hmm. without you know any much clutter I found a piece of paper it was like on a pink paper and I wrote down all these things that I wanted to do pertaining to my business so I got into digital marketing recently um, with yeah. digital marketing it was really cool because I was seeing this girl on Instagram um, make money from home by reselling a, a master resell rights product the exact same course that she took um, you can resell that exact same course to inspire somebody else if they wanted to start their own digital product. But the good thing is, is that what if you don't want to sell digital products and you just want to resell the actual course? Right. That's a way that you could also profit 100% of that actual income that you're making. So all you would have to do, because I knew that from being a shy girl and getting myself in front of the camera interacting with um, my Instagram, mm -hmm. um, someone was going to see my story. Right. Someone was going to get inspired. Someone would hit me up and yep. be like, how did you do that? Like, the more you post about something you're inspired by, someone is going to remember and keep seeing right. your face on social media. And that was the biggest thing that I had to let, you know, my students know is that don't be afraid to get out there mm -hmm. and, you know, get yourself in front of the camera. But there's always something to post. I'll even make a post for you because you, a lot of posts don't have to be your face in it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I think what what a lot of people thought originally about social media was that they had to show themselves yeah. on social media, and uh, I got to get comfortable with speaking, and it's got to be perfect. And yeah. if I mess up a word, then I got to go back and redo it. And then by the time you've done twenty six takes. You didn't. You didn't forget because after you after I, after I do like five or ten takes, I do like I need a five minute break. I like, I like, now I see why in the movie yeah. industry they be like take five because yes. it, it be like for real. You, know, you, you need to take five um, yeah. and just, and forget about this and just get away from it, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, I, I definitely understand. So what are the digital products? That you that you sell? They teach. They teach the yeah. The actual course is amazing because it literally a step-by-step -step breaking down to you in different videos with different um, voices, um, the people who started it. Um, they switch off and I want to say the modules took me about maybe a week to go through and I would just sit at home when I had a break or so or like you know after the gym or while I'm eating take some notes and I literally create my actual digital site as the videos are playing on the screen. Mm. So I would just split screen and I would see what they do. And that's the best way to learn. Right. Because I I can't read a PowerPoint and then you expect me to like find it. Like you need to show me where like purple and purple, like the colors have to match. <laughs> and like you gotta tell me what to type in the description and then I'll tweak it. But everything was like really smooth. The only thing that I really had really had a struggle with was making my accounts. 
But when the site is already made for you and the templates are already there and you just input the stuff, right. I was able to do three products um, for the new year. And I was just like, wow, I didn't know how I did that or had made time to do that. But right. it was in the back of my mind is that going into the new year, I don't want to go in, you know, scared or fearful that I didn't do everything I said I was going to do. Right. I have to start. Um, and that was the most thing I guess that I would say maybe that she was just I was so frustrated with myself last year because I felt when things were down it affected my health it affected my mental and I really was in a state where I was just like you know going having to go back again or finding like more of like a part-time job or going back to a nine-to-five that was like in my head and it resonated with me that it made me sick like I had the flu before Christmas time oh, no. yeah I had the flu before Christmas time and I just felt like this numbness going through my body not because I was probably sick but I was just mentally just in a rough patch I laid in bed literally for a couple of days just you know recuperating yeah. but it gave me time to really just be like, wow, I don't get enough rest. <laughs> I don't get enough rest because I focus too much on my business and trying to figure out something new to do and That's create. Um, and, you know, people would always say, you're doing such a good job. That would keep me going. But in my head, I didn't feel like I was doing enough. Right. And that's the most annoying thing with me is that I have to realize is that you got to put your health first. <laughs> got to. Got to put your health first, and that is probably you know my second uh, goal was to make sure that I take better care of myself, um, so I can fluctuate you know around me. You know, taking off is like it sucks when you're sick. Man, listen, I um <laughs> like I, I recently I well not recently a couple weeks ago like I had like a, a little head cold or something like that. Yeah. Um, and and even still within that right, I still said to myself. I gotta work. I gotta work. I yes. gotta work. Like even if it's even if I'm doing admin stuff, because yeah. like I, you know, I don't obviously I don't have to be speaking at all times, right? I can be doing admin stuff. I can be doing behind the scenes stuff. I can be reaching out. I can be doing research. I can be doing a whole list of different things, um, and it just makes um, like I I I've had to realize and recognize that if I if I left my business for a day, it wouldn't like like die like like that yeah. that's that was that was always my thought it was like yo if i if, if i'm not in my business man then something will happen and then the business is going burn to the ground yeah. it's going to sink like the titanic or something like that <laughs> and i got re- i had to realize that that's not what's going to happen and so i had to practice more mental um uh, mental stability mental health um uh, more self-care you know what i'm yeah. saying stuff like that um, because it's you. because it's so it's super important um so uh, uh so how can how can people connect with you? How can um, where can where can I go to get your services? You you're at a studio, right? Mm-hmm. Where's your studio at? So my studio is located in Atlanta, not too far. I am in the DMV area as well. Um, you can follow me on IG on Q and L Beauty Studios, Q and L Beauty Studios, all one word, no underscore. What's so Q and L? Oh, it stands for Queens and Lashes. So when I first started, um, I changed my name twice along the course of my lash industry. So Q and L Beauty Studios. So I did like a little name change in the beginning of like. Uh, what was the What was the first name? It was Queens and Lashes. So I just took the initials Queens and Lashes because I know a lot of people put oh, okay. their name in it, and I just wanted something different. So I just wanted people to know that they would still be a queen, but they would have lashes. So in my head, I was like, when creating the name, I was like. I had 50 names on, and I'm like, I don't like none of this stuff. Like, I didn't really want to put, you know, my actual name, but that sounds like you will still be a Queens, and I'm really big on, like, positive affirmations, Mm. which is also a freebie if you want to, you know, download it on my digital products. Yes, I love positive affirmations. Oh, no. Yes, so, um, yeah. Go check me out, QNL Beauty Studios. (laughs) QNL Beauty Studios. That's the the Instagram as well, social media, Um, all of that. Q N L Beauty Studios, not the not the word in, but the letter. No, yeah, the letter N. Yeah, the letter N. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. We got, we got to make sure that, that we say that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to confuse them. Um. Okay. So, um. Uh, so they, they they can they can come to you and get their lashes and come and get their tweezers. And I also travel. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I do travel services. Of so you do travel services? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, I do well, travel services. Hey, listen, tra- 
travel services then, yes. right? You know what I'm saying? That's what costs extra. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all, y'all worry about ladies, get your lashes. Yes. Um, so what are what were what were some of the biggest challenges that you had in entrepreneurship like so far, right? It had it hasn't been peaches and ice cream and sunshine and rainbows, right? Mm-hmm. Um what 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 would you say uh, was one of the biggest challenges um, in entrepreneurship that helped change you? Ooh, I would say is just trying to find that courage and take that leap of faith. Even after taking courses, what people don't realize is just one course doesn't really make you the ultimate, you know, lash artist. I want to say is that you have to work behind the scenes because as as a business person who's providing a service, um, you may not have employees. You are mm-hmm. social marketing. You are accounting at the end of the day. You are PR. You are the delivery person. Um, um, you are the person who is working, messaging people back. Um, and there's some days where you're really going to be like, oh, my God, I'm making so much money. But that money goes into products <laughs> making your own business yeah and like people are like oh my god she just made like a thousand dollars off of the lash class that's so awesome but then i'm just like honestly that that's gotta go into the rules <laughs> so then you have to plan you have to know that you have to surround yourself with positive people mm-hmm. that was a uh, also a big thing for me because with business i wasn't you know a nine to five i wasn't like a 10 to seven thirty. Okay. i was like 24 7. there were days that lash lash classes went until midnight why i don't know but you know wow yeah so i had to find that balance and find people who understood that balance as well without getting mad at me like mm-hmm. please don't be mad at me if I can't make time to like hang out with you because I'm starting I can't, every weekend. I like, can't we you do. guys but I will <laughs> say that through entrepreneurship I've met a lot of great people who have also started their business mm-hmm. and that networking is so powerful I'd rather you put me in a room with two to three people who are going to help me grow in my business mm-hmm. and putting me somewhere in D.C. in a club with a thousand people giving me compliments I want to hear. Right. Make, make me feel like my business is going to grow because you took the time to like look at my business and mm-hmm. see what I need to grow on. And I'm okay you know. now. Before I was just like, I don't know why this person is criticizing me. But then with people, you also have to understand with them criticizing you and your business, they don't know what it took to, you know, get you to where you are. Right. They want to let you know, well, you should do this. You should do that. And I had to listen to myself and, yes, you could tell me I should do this and do that. But, like, okay, you don't have a business. No. <laughs> I, I, taking advice from... The blind and leading the blind. Yeah. It ain't never I'm just it like, like, oh, I'm man. Okay, thank you anyway. <laughs> have a nice day. <laughs> That don't understand the mindset, that don't understand the things that you go through. Because you have, you have, as an entrepreneur, you have to go through a lot. There's a lot of challenges that you have to go through. There's a lot of um, hurdles that you have to jump. Yeah. Um, and, and and there's there's some good too, right? Like I don't, I don't want people to think that entrepreneurship is super At super all. hard. Um, it's a journey. It is. Don't look, don't look at the destination. Just, yeah. just look at what's in front of you. You gotta be there for the ride. Like you gotta be yes. there for the ride. Know that that, that look. This, this is an extended, you know, we, we the extended warranty, all right? We, right. Have, we got the 15 day board. This will take a long time, you know, to get this. I'm still in the trial period, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on this long trial period. But it's great to, to be able to meet people along mm-hmm. the way who are willing to still support you, even if you don't talk to them every day, because right. you're still inspiring. Whether if you have 20 followers, 4,000, you know, 10K. It's amazing to see where, you know, your your journey can lead you to yeah. the hands of someone that you didn't even know who, you know, is, you can inspire as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, what is what is next for Queen of Lashes? What is next for Darling? What's, what's next? I want to continue to still inspire through doing lashes. I still want to teach lashes, of course. You teach a course, right? How much, yeah, you, how much is the course for the... Uh, so, for the I just did a promotion special uh, recently for the New Year's when you sign up for $100. 
um, the course was taking me back to the beginning four years ago when I first started my very first lash class mm -hmm. for um, $600 after you pay the $100 deposit. Lash classes now can range anywhere from 1000 to almost $2,000 just for teaching one person alone, right? Um, why am I doing lashes. it for less? Yeah, people are like, why are you doing it for less? I found that the money, of course, I always go back to the impact. I don't care if one day I put up a post and I was like, I want to teach a lash course, you know, for next month for 500 If I get about 10 girls taking that course, you do the math. I'm excited to be in the room in front of girls who saw my flyer and they hit me up and tell me, I've been watching you for like a long time now. I really want to take, I think I'm ready. That to me, they ain't know about that you can right. compare to someone saying, I followed you in, you know, since high school. Like, I think I really want to take that course. Crazy. So do I deter her just because she didn't have the money at the time? Or do I take that opportunity you know, and walk with her to help her on her journey. Granted, she can take future classes. Yep. And I'm not, I'm not, I may not be the only stop that she takes on her road For to sure. success. But the fact that she believed in me and she could have gone anywhere else, um, I take that as, you know, a win at yeah. the end. So, you know, my prices, people always say my prices are my prices. Yeah, I get it. But sometimes, I'm like, I do things the way I run my business because I know the impact is going to be great. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, in 2024, we are looking for more impact from you. Yes. Uh, we appreciate you coming uh, on the couch and telling your story. We are looking forward to supporting you. Um, so, y'all know, like she said, go to Queens and Lashes. Um, you got dot com too, website, or is it well, just Q&L Beauty Studios. You can finish okay, uh, find me on Instagram and also on Facebook as well. Um, so how do they, they book appointment with you? Oh, uh, they can go on my site. So, uh, on my site. It's in my bio. <laughs> That's all. So when I make my highlights, y'all, I always like have like this verbiage where I'm just like, hey, Stanley, um, you're watching Disney Channel <laughs> and all of that stuff. And I always say, go and follow the link on my bio. So it's acuity. So it's qnlbeauty.as.me forward slash. That's a lot. So if you follow me on Instagram, you're going to see on my bio that there's a link right under Click on that, and it's going to let you know all the uh, policies and procedures and all of that, the before care, before coming into your appointment. But if you still have questions, you can definitely just send me a message. I am no stranger. I would have the same questions, too, if I'm trying out, you know, lash services for the first time. I will definitely message you guys back. <laughs> Listen, y'all, tap in Q&L. Y'all know the model here. Always stay in your bag. So you never gotta chase a bag, and it's always a pleasure. Till next time. See you guys.